Hey, a lot of you out there may recognize my Staccato P from SDI, my 2011. I uh, bought this recently, and I showed everyone when I bought it, and I've been shooting it quite a bit over the last week. I've put several hundred rounds through this gun, and I'm really liking this gun. This gun is awesome, but there's one thing about it I don't like, and it's this grip right here. I don't like that texture, that alligator skin texture, you know, right there, that melt treatment. Now, I know a lot of people pay extra for this, but I just don't like it. So, uh, been thinking about changing out the grip. And you may also notice here that I actually scratched up the magwell right here. Had a little accident at the range yesterday. I'll tell you more about that at a later date. But because I did that, and because I don't really like this texture, I thought I would use the two things as an excuse to change the grip module on this gun. If you're familiar with the STI 2011, the entire grip frame and trigger guard here are polymer, while the receiver and the slide are actual steel. So you can actually take all this part off and replace it, and that's what I'm gonna do. And what I'm gonna do is replace it with a stock grip right here in flat dark earth that hasn't had that melt treatment to it. It also hasn't had the cuts on the trigger guard, etc. I kinda like the cuts on the trigger guard. I may have it done to this grip, but you know, they're not essential to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and trade this out and see if I like this one on there better. Now this one has a little flared out bottom like it has its own little magwell on it. I don't know if the other grip has that on it or not and the actual magwell goes over this, but we will see once we get this put on there. Okay, I have never taken the grip module off one of these before, and I'm not going to read the instruction because we all know, you know, instructions are for losers. I mean, or for people who want to actually know what they're doing. And uh, I'm just going to take them off. So this will be the first time I've ever taken them off. If you've never taken them off before, maybe you can learn from watching me probably do it wrong. All right, first I'm going to take one of my badly mangled brass punches. I really need to quit being cheap and buy a new punch set. And I'm going to tap out the magwell. Seems like it's a good place to start to me. There, got it out. That extra wide frame uh, presents a little bit of an issue. How does this come off? Oh, there we go. Oh, this does actually have the little lip on it, so I can reuse this if I recoat it. I'll just take it out, give it a, uh, sand it out a little bit, give it a black Cerakote, put it back on. So it looks like I will be able to reuse it. All right, now let's take the grip screws out. Now only the top grip screws are actually attached to anything. The bottom ones are not, so you don't have to take those out. Take out the other side. All right, now I gotta take out this little screw right here at the top of the trigger guard. Let me figure out how to get that out of there. It looks like I'm gonna have to get one, uh, an Allen wrench in both sides. So hold on one second here. Okay, I got an Allen wrench on both sides now. Now just to unscrew it. Now we just gotta push out the little bushings at the top of the grip where the top grip screws go into and make contact. Yep, that came out. Oh, I think that did it. It's coming off. Yay, it came off. There we go. We have the grip separated from the receiver. Now I just got to figure out what I got to take out of this grip and put in the other one uh, and then put it back together. It's going to be like a 1911 now, I think. I got to take out the little mainspring housing here and take the innards out of that and put them in the new one. And then, of course, you got your little leaf spring here uh, with your little three springs there on it, your three little legs on it there. That'll have to go into the new grip. Now I've got to remove the magazine release and then I can take the trigger out. This looks like it is actually an Allen wrench. So let's push this out a little bit. I'm assuming this comes out just like a normal 1911. Okay, now that's out. And the trigger just slides right out. Take the little trigger bow. Yep, came right out. I don't know if I'm going to reuse this trigger or not. I don't know if I like these little skeletonized triggers. I might put an aluminum trigger in it. Uh, for one, this is plastic, but we'll see. Okay, that looks like everything that needs to come out of it. I just have to put these parts into the uh, the new one and then put it together. First, I'm going to take the black screws out of the bottom of this one because if I remember correctly, the other one has silver screws. So I'm going to want to replace them with the black ones. And I'm going to take the little pin out of this one here, get the mainspring housing out of it. All right, this part I'm betting is just like taking it out of another 1911. So let me compress this. You're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing here because I'm compressing it in my hand and pushing the little pin out. Just pushing out that little pin there to let the plunger and spring come out of here. Now let's put this in this one. To make it easier on myself, I'm gonna disassemble this before I put it back together instead of trying to have to maneuver those little pieces in there. So let me go ahead and take this off 
this just comes out like any 1911 safety. Uh, you got to make sure that doesn't pop out, and it didn't, so that's good. Uh, then you come over to this side, just swing this one up, and pull this one out. And now I just got to take out these little pins right here. And there's one right down there, and they usually just slide right out. Uh, I'll give it a little poke here. Poke, poke, poke. There we go. And there, everything just fell out. I'm going to go ahead and just start putting this grip module back on this gun now. Now i got to figure out how these go back in. That one's in. Now let me put a grip screw in it. All right, these top grip screws are a little longer because they actually go into something. So the bottom ones are shorter. Now let's just do the same on the other side. And I don't know why I said that like that. I don't know why I'm talking like a pimp from a 70s TV show. All right, it has engaged with the little bushing in there. And I can feel it pulling that little bushing into place. And it's tight now. Remember, it takes two Allen wrenches here. So got one on the back and now I'll tighten this one down. Okay, the new grip frame is actually on the receiver here. Just got to put everything back together and we'll see how it looks. And it is back together. One last thing I got to do though is change out these bottom uh, screws here because they are silver and I don't want silver ones there, but they don't even do anything. They're just decorative. So I'm going to put those back in here. Well, I don't even know why they have them here. Uh, they could take them out of the design. They're not necessary. I guess just to make it look traditional, but they're not necessary at all. All right, there she is with the new grip frame and its new two-tone look. And I will say I like it. One thing I might do is order a black uh, mainspring housing for it just to have the black continue down from the grip safety into the magwell. I think that might look kind of cool to do that. But otherwise, really like it. I might see about getting this cut, but to be honest, my hands aren't huge and I don't really need the cut under there because this is a big grip. I'm, that cut always makes more sense on a compact gun to me than it does a full-size gun, but it does look kind of cool, so I might have it done. But I am liking the two-tone look. Now I just got to get to the range and see how it shoots, but for now, I'm going to call this a success because that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. No real problems. Once you get the uh, grip frame itself off here, the grip and the trigger guard it's just like working on a 1911 so there's just a couple of little differences but like i said pretty easy overall and i really like the way it looks now that might be take the actual magazine out that might have been a good idea that has got nothing to do with i uh, have never done this before anyone should know to take the magazine out first that's too big for once, or something. Well, for once I got something that's too big. Let me see if this one fits it. All right, now let's see if this comes off. <clears throat> it doesn't seem to want to budge. Hmm. Let me take the slide off here so that I can take a look at something first. I probably should have taken the slide off already, but you know how things go. Boy, this sucker don't want to come out of there. Are those bushings? Hold on, let me check and see here. You test a hypo. Yep, that came out. I'm hoping that's supposed to come out. It doesn't look like what I thought it was once I push it out, but let's see. This one don't want to come out. The other one popped out, so I'm going to give this a very light tap, and if it don't move, I'm putting the other one back. Oop, it moved. Uh, for better or for worse, it moved. So we'll see. And of course, the trigger. The trigger will need to go into the new grip. Does that come out of there? Oh, I forgot to take out the mag release. I gotta do that. All right, let's hope we can find where that landed. Is that, nope, that's a dead fly. That's gross. There's like six or seven dead flies down here. I don't know what the fuck happened. Like some sort of fly suicide pact. Okay, I got that on there. I had to tap it on with the uh, rubber side of my mallet here. Uh, and I spilled uh, pretty much a whole bottle of Aluma Blue in my lap while I was doing it, so now I look like I pissed myself. But other than that, it's on there. So. Yeah, well, it'll go into something if you know how to screw. Never been my strong point. But I'm a good cuddler, so that makes up for it, so I'm told. 
I probably should have done all that taking stuff apart before I took the grip module off, but you know, I'm not a patient man or particularly smart man. So I used to be a good looking man, but that used to get me by. Not anymore. What did I pull out of there? Oop, I pulled out another screw accidentally. Don't want to do that. Oops. Don't want to do that. Don't want to be scratching up my gun, dropping shit on it. All right, got that on there. And it works. Or does it? Shot my little spring across the room. Luckily, I found it right away. Well, damn it, that piece went flying again. Okay, before I put it back together here, though, I do want to say one thing. I have decided to go ahead and leave in the skeletonized trigger. Uh, now, you might be asking, why am I doing that? Well, I'm doing that because I've realized that once you get it in there, once you get the frame back on, it don't come out. Once you attach this grip frame to the receiver, uh, that uh, does not come out of there any longer. You actually have to take the grip frame off the receiver to remove the trigger, and I don't feel like taking it back off again, so I'm gonna leave that trigger in there. <gasps> Oops. Thank you.